Hi folks, Stephen Nicholas here. Thanks for tuning in to this conversation I'm going to be having with uh, Adam Michalak here. He's been my cinematographer and a first person experience with the uh, five sequence drawing process. Uh, he and I have been together working now for five days, something six, in that six range, days. six days with uh, all the, the other videos, including this one, that are on the website that, that many of you will have watched. And um, so I'm really looking forward to, to some of his questions that he will have for me, and I probably will have some questions for him. And some of the questions, there are many of these questions, the ideas there will also be useful for you guys in different places in your practice with the five sequence drawing process and um, so Adam I'm, I'm going to ask you a first question um, and that that question is when you got here a week ago six days ago you really didn't have any too much of an inkling of what you were getting into other than it was a, a cinematography opportunity to uh, make some money and help me out with all these great videos that you've been uh, the technical and uh, artistic in, uh, person working with those. So, so let me just ask you to, to think for a few moments about your experience as a, a new participant with the five sequence drawing process. I think you're up to maybe five or six drawings that you've done since uh, you showed up to town? Uh, no, I've done six. Six. Um, uh, I'm really enjoying it. We've, when, when you, there's definitely been some stuff recently in my life that has been kind of bugging me and I've been kind of keeping it inside and not really wanting to start anything with anyone and kind of letting it brew inside and kind of I've been getting a little angry and frustrated, but being able to put it out on a, a page and kind of stare at it, it's nice because it's, it's, it's still inside, but now it's on a page and I, I've come to terms with the, of what I think I need to do to uh, get past and move beyond like the, the frustration that those things are are uh, causing in my life. And those things involve people? Uh, yes, all of the p people and personal stuff too. Okay. Um, oh great, so yeah. some, some both more internal stuff and then some relational stuff with folks in your life. Exactly, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's good to hear that. Um, okay, so let me ask you then both either from your your experience running the the cameras and, and working with the, uh, with me and or your experience with the process but maybe maybe your experience with the process wh what were some of the things the experiences parts of it that you found more intuitive to work with and w what did you discover find maybe a little more challenging to work with and in your six drawings so far? I, definitely the most challenging part of it is not, well like you say, not using your right side of the brain. Kind of, because I want, when I'm on what the, the second, third, and, and fourth, it's really, I have this feeling inside of me and I want, as an artist I logically want to like create a, a nice piece of artwork, but it's more about, of course, getting that emotion and that feeling onto the page. And that, at first, was, I think, a little challenging because it was, again, I'm using the right side of my brain, which I've used for, what, 22 years and not really, like, thinking about it. But then, you know, you, you tell me, take my time, you know. It's just, you know, what you want to get out there onto the page and, you know, sitting back and giving it some time from the first to definitely the sixth one, I feel it's a lot easier to 
uh, put the process of my feelings onto those, uh, the second, third, and fourth one. Um, and of course, the, I mean, the, the easiest part is that first story, because I know what I want, and it's just, I can easily just... Panel, you mean the panel yeah, one? Yeah, panel one. And after you got enough backlogged in there that <laughs> there's so much, yeah. something is, has been relatively simple. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, your first drawing was actually a huge uh, choice. It was wonderful. Adam recently graduated from uh, college as a cinematographer. And so this wonderful question arose for him on our first drawing. This one that's actually back there in I think it's video three maybe on on the sequence on the website was well what what do I do now? I mean here's a young guy twenty two years old with a great four year cinematography degree behind him and, and a whole lot of interest not just in cinematography but cinematography but in in, in other areas also and uh, holding that question was just a, a huge huge thing and going back if you were to look at video three his uh, drawings are really really sweet uh, really opened a really nice space I felt so yeah, I think there's a lot of a lot to be learned as we discover that it's really useful not to feel hurried. Yeah. Even though, you know, a lot of times it doesn't require a lot of minutes to complete a five sequence drawing. Another key point I think is that there is no audience other than you or me. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about these because we actually have a secondary audience, which is the folks that are checking out the, the instructional videos. Yet when when doing these, we want to remember that we, we don't really have anybody. We all kind of have this audience up in our head for everything we do or don't do in, in the world and in our mind. And yet it's really helpful to realize nobody has to understand what I do for panel one. Yeah. Because it's only for me to understand. And then the trans the transition to moving from you know the literal drawings you see up here in panel one which you know have stick figures and uh, different normal kinds of stuff that we work with every day and then the two threes and fours are abstract by design and that transition to instead of telling a story expressing my feelings about the story as color and pattern. And that's a principle that, that comes from, you know, a number of different practice traditions that, that I've studied in, and those of you that have extensive backgrounds will have too. And um, there's, you know, there's kind of one version of a story, but when we get to two, three, and four, them being abstract expressions that allows many different surface structures, many different surface sets of behaviors or strategies to flow out of those. And that's really what we're looking to do. So there's a relationship between this work and my 25 plus years with Steve Gilligan and uh, generative trance, Ericksonian hypnosis, and the work that, that he does, self-relations, psychotherapy, and more recently, he's been focusing a lot more with his uh, training partner, Robert Diltz, on coaching. A number of you probably are familiar with his work. And, and so there's a relationship uh, in this work to, to that work, especially the trance, uh, generative trance work and the self-relations. In my work as a psychotherapist, I use self-relations really regularly. This is also... Uh, the drawing, the five sequence drawing is a regular part of, of my activities. And we're really tracking how is it that we can create more fundamental choices? How can we increase our internal flexibility in these places where it starts to get tight for us? And Adam communicated that really well by saying, you know, I've come here and I, and I had all this stuff I was just kind of trying to keep in the background of my, my experience and yet 
I was able to, to work with these experiences using this drawing process and noticing differences in your subjective experience and the ease with which you were working with some of the uh, dimensions of, of the process. So that's a re really enjoyable to hear. Um, what, what kinds of ways, what, what kinds of experiences have you noticed being different even just in the six days we've been working on this project? You might have not noticed much, much I'm just uh, asking you if, if you have noticed. You've noticed difference in your levels of frustration in certain... Yeah, a lot of my, um, my drawings have been more, have come out to be where I've, I've, I've wanted to become more calm and just, I want to say going with the flow and just kind of like, you know, okay. yeah, not, getting, not getting all mm -hmm. tightened up and stressed. So definitely, I mean, uh, what, the, the second drawing I did, um, which is an experience I've had with some of my roommates, um, that hasn't really been bothering me. Once I got on the page, I mean, it's, it's just been, uh, I want I want to like peaceful and just tranquil, and I'm not I'm not too concerned about it anymore, just because I've worked it out. And now cool. Was, yeah, then that was from the drawing, or prior to the drawing. Uh, the doing the drawing. Uh, that was uh, once doing the drawing. Yeah. So you went through the five sequence drawing with this issue related to roommates, and now that doesn't exist in a difficult way in your body or your thinking. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Glad to hear it. Well, what might you want to ask me about the work, uh, the process that we've been going through, um, what you imagine somebody watching this video might be interested in understanding more deeply? Any other question? Um, Take your time. It doesn't, I mean, they don't have to be small, I don't, I don't want to say small things in your life, but they don't, like, the stories you pick, they don't, they can, they can range from sizes, correct? Like, you don't have to... Pick little insignificant things, you don't have to pick as giant things. Right. But usually, like you suggested, in your in your situation there you had a kind of a backlog of stuff that you after you'd seen some of the way I was talking in some of the videos I did and you was going yeah okay <laughs> let me let me get to drawing please <laughs> so you began to uh, uh, to work with those in the workbook if you're watching this video you you you'll probably understand there's the 30 day challenge and the 30 day challenge is to take approximately 10 minutes a day Pick either uh, a strength or a stuck place and do a five panel drawing with it and do one a day for 30 days. And, you know, I was actually kind of uh, pleasantly impressed, pleased that, that you grabbed onto that. I, I said, well, here's your workbook. I'm going uh, to invite you to be a first person participant in this process, process not just somebody behind the cameras. I was going to ask you for a workbook, and then you just handed me one, and I was kind of like, yes. I didn't have to ask. Great, great, yeah. Because um, it, it's it is a nice outlet to to just get your like I, I mean like I said before the frustrations up instead of keeping it inside. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. not good to keep it inside. Yeah, and we we aren't we don't typically run across in in normal life circumstances, including you know higher education, normal education, sets of relationships we have in the world. You know, Adam's been very engaged in athletics, both with uh, swimming uh, competitively and, and cross country, as well as a, a swimming coach and teacher. He's from the back, back east, where they actually do a lot of swimming. Uh, it's kind of interesting, different cultural context. And, um, and yet we don't run across how, you know, we, we talk about peak performance with athletics, we'll talk about peak performance in a career, uh, 
a particular job, and yet what would peak performance mean in the case of how do I work with the day-to-day -day garden variety experiences, strengths, resources that live within me, live within you, live within you folks out there, and, and how do we work more effectively with these stuck places? Now, I, I can say that a lot of people don't really run into a tremendous amount of what you might call problems, but across a particular span of, of, of years, as we move along forward on our pathway, whether it be with career, certainly with, with uh, marriage and committed relationships and children, and the challenge in, in this Western society that the United States and other developed economies have of, of how, uh, climbing the career path as it was and discovering, as uh, Joseph Campbell once said about that, uh, he's, he, his comment was, well, we spend all these decades climbing the corporate ladder only to discover we put the ladder on the wa wrong wall. And uh, that kind of fits into a, a Carl Jung uh, quote that I really enjoy and appreciate a lot and use regularly, and that is the first 40 years of our life, we're, we're, we're attempting to learn how to, to kind of keep everybody else happy. You know, our family, our community, our, our bosses. And then coming up more or less somewhere around the age of 40, we realize, oh, what about me? How, how do I create and honor what my longings and my desires are as a primary attention and, or intention and attention, appreciating that I'm now entering the second phase of my life. And in your case, you, you know, you're, you're getting uh, just getting started outside of your kind of family of origin and your and your college degree and all the wonderful stuff you've been doing for as a young adult for a lot of years and uh, you know things happen in our lives we we get fired uh, from a job we we get uh, fired from our marriage by our spouse our, our kids don't want to hang around us um, you know, we discover that we're not the best businessman we thought we were, or that we work so hard, we're doing really great in our career, and yet, you know, everything else begins to fall apart. So the, these, you know, day-to-day, -day, year to year challenges that, that human beings faced is really what this whole development, this whole part of our culture that we might talk about as self-help, personal development, in this program I talk about it as personal transformation. Narrative journaling is a, is a, is a really familiar topic for an, an activity and practice that many people engage in. And the five panel sequence drawing process is really similar to that idea of regular journaling except for it's non-linguistic so that it's pictures, colors, and patterns allows a different part of our intelligence system to become more active. We tend to have taken and developed so much of a reliance on this kind of cognitive presence that we very much need in, in every part of our life. And yet, having done that, we, we have kind of de-emphasize the other parts of the way our intelligence system or mind works. And so one of the, the helpful practices of this is just discovering that we don't that we can we don't have to give up any of our cognitive presence in the world, but we can really emphasize balancing out, if you will, like on a teeter totter, you know, how to really take advantage of all of the ways that our mind works and appreciate that this part works well here, this part works well here, and this balance works well there. And this is one of the, from my point of view, the one, one of the big benefits of, of practicing this five sequence drawing process regularly. This is especially the case if you work with people. 
whether you're a teacher, perhaps you're a coach, a psychotherapist, all of those, an artist, uh, all of those professions really can benefit from uh, more of a practice using this particular process. Um, I suppose that's not too surprising since I developed it, but I, I believe that you'll, you know, the, the folks out there that are learning this stuff will find really great benefit in it. So thanks so much for tuning in on this video conversation with Adam Michalak and myself regarding the uh, 10 days, 10 minutes a day program to personal transformation. You're, you're seeing this video on the website. Hopefully you've enjoyed and appreciated the other instructional videos that are also up there. Have a good day. Look forward to seeing your drawings.